Hey guys, this is Nick, and this is Nick's Collectibles. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to ask you that if you like this video, please give it a like. While you're there, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell. That way you don't miss any future content. That other way, let's go ahead and get started today. Today, we have SH Figurette Sagat from Street Fighter V. The box itself is pretty simple, and it's very consistent with the others. It's nice and clean with a good window so that you can look in and see the figure itself along with all of his nice accessories. These include extra hands, a second head, and a fireball, complete with a stand. I'm, I'm very glad they added a stand. I think it's the same stand that, they can, that came with Akuma, um, so I suspect he won't be able to do his low tiger shot, but he will be able to do the high one. But it's still a welcome addition, and I'm looking forward to checking it out. Now, when you turn the box around, you can see it actually has some really good looking images of the character itself and some really iconic poses, even with him standing there like staring down Ryu. Um, it's missing one with him doing an uppercut or anything like that, but I still think it's a good array. But each one of these is, is straight from the game, but it looks fantastic. And you know what? It, that's enough of the box. Let's go ahead and open it up and have a look at this guy. I have to admit, I've been looking forward to this one. Sagat is one of my favorite characters from the game, and it looks like they've done a stellar job on his likeness here. Let's go ahead and get this guy in here and take a look at his head sculpt, which I think actually looks pretty spot on. You can see the subtle shading on his cheekbones and right around his chin. He has his signature eye patch, which is painted on, and I have to say it looks really good. It sort of disappears at the bottom of his cheek and then reappears on the other side of his head, but I don't really know how else you would have done that, so I'm not really going to ding him on that too much. Um, the other thing is his eye has a nice dark outline on it, making the white stand out. He even has a scar on the side of his head. It just looks as close as you could get in, the, in figure form, in my opinion. I think he looks spot on as far as head sculpt goes. While we're here, let's go ahead and take a look at his other head as well. How you put that on is you simply just pop the original off. This will expose the ball joint. Then you snap the other one on. He has a bit of a grimace in this one and his eyes are narrowed down just a bit, making him look a little bit more angry. I think this one looks really, really good as well. And I'd be kind of hard to press to say which one of these I actually like better. But if we go ahead and move down on his onto his chest, you can see that he actually has a signature scar. And again, I'm impressed with this. They've gone and done a very nice dark color that contrasts well with his skin. And the fact that it's a shade or two darker than the shadowing on his chest and arms makes it stand out all the more, which is fantastic. Speaking of shading, let's go ahead and take a look at the nice shading that they did. This is something that they've been consistently good at doing in the last few figures, and this one's absolutely no exception. Just look at how nicely all this makes his chest, arms, and abs stand out. Then if you go ahead and move to his hands, you can look at both of these and you can see they did some nice shadowing and detailing on them to make sure the wrap around his hand stands out more. I'm not really sure why they did more of it on his right hand than his left hand, but regardless, both look really nice. And from here, you can even see the amount of sculpting and detail that went into the arms to give him an insane amount of muscle definition. That all not only is this line known for, but this character in particular. While we're here, let's go ahead and look, go over the optional hands. Um, like the rest of the figure arts figures, you can just pretty much pop the hand right off. Then snap the other one on like so. I can't see using these too much unless you want to display them in either grappling someone or doing a signature tiger knee. But the molding and detail on them are really, really nice. So they're a welcome addition in my opinion. I also think they did a really good job on his trunks, which you can kind of see now. Uh, they're done in his signature colors with a red band and blue coloring and a red stripe down the side. If you go ahead and look close, you can see the detailing for the elastic, where the blue meets it as well. There's like some creases and stuff, and then there's even more creasing on the shorts legs. In addition to this, where things struck me as odd, but actually really smart at the same time, is the leg portion of his trunks aren't attached to the main part of the shorts. This seems weird when you first look at it, but it gives him so much more flexibility in poses that I have to give this one to him. It was a really smart move. Now, let's go ahead and finish up going over the details. His quads had the same kind of shadowing and detailing that his upper body did, giving him that really nice detailing you'd want. If you go a little bit further down, you can see they also did this with his calf and the wraps around his feet. They even did some nice detailing on his toes and made sure that his foot wrap goes all the way around his feet. Now, here's the big thing. 
you want to know about. I'm sure you guys want to know about it. Does he move and pose well? Well, let's go ahead and start looking at like what options you have for posability. Let's start with the feet. Here you can see that his knee bends past 90 degrees and he has some toe articulation. His ankle rocks side to side and he has some really good ankle tilt down but not so much upwards. His leg will go out past 90, letting him do some fairly impressive high kicks. And before you ask, yes, yes he can hold that pose without a stand. It's not easy to get him there to stay standing that way, but he can do it. Moving up to his waist, he can move side to side at the hips and a bit at the chest. It's not a ton, but it's enough to make him look more dynamic in poses. So, it's pretty good. On top of that, his arms can do a full 360. Um, I have to admit, the 360 arm motion is a bit stiff on mine. I'm not sure why, but it doesn't always want to go. Uh, I kind of have to line it up just so, so to get it start rotating. Um, on top of that, you can actually, you know, bend him at the elbow. His, his wrist will turn around, but there's not a lot of in and out motion, so there's not a ton there. Uh, he doesn't really have any bicep rotation to speak of on this particular figure, so that's a little bit of a downgrade compared to some of the others. However, the last thing is his head and neck. Uh, the neck will move up and down. That works pretty easily. His head will move up and down, and it'll also move to side to side. This gives him a pretty good and even level of articulation with most of the line. Uh, some of them had a little bit more like bicep rotation, but... This one in particular doesn't. Overall, I think the articulation on this guy is pretty solid, and he fits well with the rest of the line. Now, his last accessory is his fireball, or rather his tiger shot. This works exactly like Akuma's and allows him to look like he's shooting a projectile. I'll be honest, I'm surprised they included a shorter stand for this so that you could do a slow tiger shot as well. Um, it's much further than I thought they would go with him and makes me really, really happy. He also comes with a backdrop that match matches up to his stage, I'm glad they include these, but I always find I have a hard time lining them up right, and a lot of times they come bent, which makes them hard to straighten out for use, and honestly, I just prefer not to use them at all. In the end, I have to say, as a figure overall, I really like this guy. He's a solid entry in the line. Sure, he's missing a few things I would have liked to have seen from other figure arts figures, but the likeness is good, the attention to detail is solid, and he's got really good st stability and posability. If you're a fan of the character of the game, I recommend picking this guy up and putting him in your collection. I don't think you're going to be disappointed with him, because I'm not myself. Again, thanks for watching, guys. Um, hopefully you guys check out some of my other content. Again, just a quick reminder, if you enjoyed this, please go ahead and give me a sub subscribe, and go ahead and hit the bell, that way you don't miss anything as far as future content. But until next time, guys, I'm out.